Oh, hey, guys. Oh, hey, everybody. I am so excited for this. I love these games. Devil May Cry? Yes. I have loved them from day one. Yes, there are games that did not quite um, do what they were supposed to, Devil May Cry 2. Uh, but Let's be real here, Cujo. <laughs> we all know you've got bad taste in games. Shut up. <laughs> I love these games. I'm a Capcom whore. I can't help it. No, uh, to be totally fair, I, I do really. I'm a Capcom sucker, too. Like, yeah. I love all of their work. And while they tend to write some of the worst stories ever, <laughs> the gameplay is generally spot on. Yeah. Um, and I haven't played... So I didn't play the original Devil May Cry 4, but right. I played most of the others. I think I played up to three. Good. Okay. Um... Three was really the defining one for the series because it introduced, it, it reintroduced Dante and the game as a over-the-top action, ridiculous like, oh, what if he like kicked a chair and it flipped and then it landed and he landed in the chair and it was it'd be cool, it'd be badass. Like, it introduced that concept to the series. Um, so also, basically, we'll see more of that in this. Yeah, it introduced the idea that uh, that you can have things be over the top and awesome. Um, what? So now let you start a new game. Did it really rule? That is. Tell you what, we're gonna we're gonna take a pause pause here, and uh, we'll join Bang and Singer. Hey ya! Hey, so uh, play testing basically created a file that we can't really delete, which is un- weird. But uh, basically, we'll 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 play the little uh, beginning cutscene that we didn't look at before because you know we were we were getting ready to play test oh, so. it's so weird it has a an interface yeah oh you can turn it off though Spoil. yeah so uh this game came out in 2008 um the original from, obviously from capcom the original yes okay i was just gonna say didn't you just tell me this one came out like a week ago yeah well the special edition came out a week ago and the what is so Odd and interesting to me is that this one. By the way, don't don't make fun of me because the graphics are low. <laughs> My computer's having a problem. Um, it doesn't seem that bad. Yeah. So what interests me about this release is that uh, this originally came out in two thousand eight. So it's kind of interesting that they're coming out with all this stuff for a game that came out in two thousand eight and not their most recent uh, reboot of Devil May Cry. But it's not as though if you already owned Devil May Cry 4, it's not like you can just download this as DLC. Right, this because is... this is... Every, from what I've heard, there is so much... It's not like an overhaul, but there is a lot of stuff that got upgraded and changed around. Not to mention the fact that they added, as you can see, Virgil. They added being able to play Trish and Lady. They added a couple of new difficulty modes and they, costumes and such. They, like They basically realized that they fucked up the last one and decided to make this one see, not messed up, I, not bad. I don't think they messed it up, though. I think it really held true to what they wanted from a from the reboot and that what the shit uh can i just really can i say really quick that i actually really like those monsters yeah they're a really cool design yeah nice good old throwback to Dynamite cry 3 oh they're more of them they're like uh rag dolls just yeah. kind of like stitched together with- oh cool Probably with little demon dudes possessing them or something. Yeah, it's cool. No, I, I like it. We don't see stuff like that all the time. Yeah. So I, I, I really did like the newest one, the DMC. Uh, I like that they took the concept and messed with it a whole lot. Um, in that, like the game design, the the character design, the level design, the enemy design, everything was totally fresh and interesting and new. I loved it. I thought it was cool. I mean, the game looked like it played well. Yeah, it, it really did. I, I, I I'm not convinced the story was good, but it was a, a little, I would say, more off the wall than uh, than the original are... series. Really? Yes. I know. Isn't, In that, isn't, it was more a little, a little bit more grounded in "quote unquote" reality. It know? isn't. Isn't Dante a kid in that one? Yes, it's before or teen. he. Yeah, he's like a late teens or something like that. But um, what's so interesting about it is that it could technically still fit into the timeline of the the past games. Uh. So here we have a decision. 
do we want to play the normal game with the two main characters, Nero and Dante? Do we want to play as Virgil, the freaking badass? Or do we want to mix it up and play as Trish and Lady? Well, do you think it would be good to, to start off this playthrough in the traditional way with uh, Dante? We could. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, I'm up for whatever, really. Um, something else that we're actually doing this time around is that we actually, we're, we're planning and playing through this entire game. Yes. Um, so this is going to be a long series, and I know we said that about Dark Souls, and Kujo uh, pooped out on me with Dark Souls. So, uh. <laughs> this time, if we, we have to, we're going to finish this, and if we don't, I'm going to yell at Kujo, and we're going to finish it anyway. Okay. So we're going Nero and Dante? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Let's do this. What? Screw it. Why not? What? Is it just it's, a different... It's just a different look. That's oh. All. It's, it's... Although one thing that really kind of was cool was that, at least in 3, and I wonder if they did that for the other characters as well, um, the alternate costume was like a thro- like a Victorian look. And I remember thinking to myself, like, huh, that's, that's kind of weird. Why is Dante looking like he's from the Victorian area? That's kind of awkward. And his hair's shorter. What the hell? And then you would go into the... Um, basically devil mode Mm -hmm. and you became the mythical father demon guy that was briefly mentioned in the first game it was cool it offered a a little bit more than just a skin in my opinion it offered a little bit of like a little bit of lore if you will so that is um, interesting yeah uh one of my favorite things about this game um are actually the, the voice actors um i'm big into voice acting um and I really like when they find people who are sort of not on the main radar, uh, that are, you know, kind of off the wall. Like, Ruben Langdon uh, voices Dante. He did canon, the latest Street Fighter game. He's been around for a bit. Um, the guy who voices Nero is actually one of the Power Rangers. <laughs> um, Fantastic. Who's actually, in terms of mainstream, yeah, he's people are going to be like, oh yeah, that's Adam from Power Rangers. But if you're talking anime and voice acting, he's Vash the Stampede. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Um, another from, thing... From... From Trigun. My if, favorite anime. Yeah. Besides Full Metal. I don't know if you said Trigun, but we should at least mention that if yeah. we're going to call out him by name. That's true. <laughs> um, huh, his sword looks all crazy. That's fun. Ooh. Interesting. So, okay, let's talk about this cutscene. We yeah. don't really have any exposition about what's going on. Not really. It's just shit starts happening. Dante's just kind of walking around in these... Gets, well, it's Nero. That's not Dante. Oh, I don't know the difference. <laughs> I don't. I, I actually don't. No, it's okay. I don't so, know when that when the difference occurred. It might have been three, but it was so long ago, I don't know any, it's okay. any of these characters other the, than Dante. The key things to remember for this game, in terms of the story, pardon me, is I readjust my seated position. Um, there is the legendary Dark Knight Sparta. He fought against the demon army uh, from hell and, and sealed the gate while... Um, sealing himself inside Hmm. Uh, before he did so he fell in love with a human and uh, they had two kids Dante and Virgil Uh, oh that's right yeah Uh, some stuff happened and they started hating each other started fighting each other whatever basically because they are the sons of Sparta and a human they have access to abilities that no other demon or human have which is making themselves look like demons but also having a crazy crazy power level and all that, whatever. This game takes place after uh, the first game, I believe. Like, chronology-wise, I think this one takes place after the original Devil May Cry. Oh, weird. Yeah. Um, They, so... I feel like Capcom does that shit a lot. Yeah, but it, it's kind of interesting. I'd rather them do that than just like, ugh, great, it, we well, to see Well, okay, it's, it's fun if it's done right. Yeah. I feel like with Devil May Cry, it's a little all over the place. With games like um, Metal Gear Solid, which I know is not Capcom, <laughs> they, they jump around a lot, but it, it all still makes sense. It doesn't feel as chaotic. Right. Because you're technically following two different characters entirely, well, I guess three characters if you include fucking whiny face McGee. Raiden. Yeah. Who became he a became fucking a psycho. Uh, 
But fucking goddamn, he was so annoying when he was first introduced. But apparently the yeah. Japanese loved him. Hey, whatever. He was the, the their pretty own, boy. I guess. He um, was the pretty boy. Now, a couple things to take away from this opening, these opening cutscenes. A, there's a statue with the Dark Knight Sparta in the back. Huh. B, uh, Nero, our new main character, has a cast on his arm. We don't really know at this point what happened to his arm I that caused the injury. I was thinking about that, yeah. Um, and... Obviously, there's going to be a love interest with uh, Kyrie, who is the woman who was singing. And also, he's a bit of a rebellious guy because he has headphones, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait, but this is 2,000 years ago. No, he's he's going over stuff from 2,000 years ago. Oh. He's, he's retelling the events of the legendary Dark Knight Sparta. Oh, okay. I was like, but how? Headphones, what? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh, Basically... We can assume that this um, whole organization could be sort of cult in uh, cultish um, in its origin. Just judging from the guy who's preaching about the Dark Knight and all that. Um, I mean, you know, also the hooded figures and all that. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's got a hood. Don't know why. Maybe it's because they all have white hair, except for that one guy who's who looked like an asshole. <laughs> he he had the he had the asshole eyebrows. Any anime character, you look at their eyebrows. If they have, if they look like they're pissed off all the time, they're going to be a bad guy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Or an asshole. Hey, what the hell? Oh, God. Screw praying. I'm out of here. Oh, wow. Hey, look at that. Um, what a tood. Yeah, he's truly rebellious. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, what, what? What's happening? His arm was glowing. Who's, oh, who's shit. this? He's gonna kill oh, you. Oh, is that? That's that's Dante. Oh, oh shit! He looks he looks kind of creepy when he looks like that. He's gonna be cool. What? What? He killed the main guy. But but Dante's a good guy, right? He's supposed to be a good guy. I'll be honest. I have no idea what's happening. Dante is a murderer. I mean, yeah, something like that's happening. Huh. Oh, oh, I mean, do oh, you oh. actually know what's going on and you're just I like... Do. yes. I'm yeah, just... okay, so you're just being an asshole. Well, it all does get revealed <laughs> within the story. That's the thing. Like, well, right. This will make sense later. I'm, I'm speaking more to you. Oh, what? What, what is what? that? What? This oh, is oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Crazy. oh, that guy's dead. <laughs> that guy's... Both of them are dead. I mean, oh! I think it's pretty safe to assume a lot of these people are are dead. Yeah. So okay. So this is sort of an introduction to the character we know and love, but what the heck is going on? Because he's seemingly murdering innocent people. I suppose that is interesting in that most of the other games, I think all the other games, when Dante is introduced, he's still introduced as the the. Not, I don't, don't want to say hero, but he's kind of like the anti-hero, you know? Yeah. He's he's never portrayed as like a straight-up bad guy. Yeah. Um, as far as I can remember. No. Um, but in this instance, he's, you know, it's like, wait, what? Yeah, but why would he do this? Yeah, this is the first full, like, uh, wait, he's just murdering people. And I, I will say the cinematography on this is actually pretty good in, in presenting that that feeling. Yeah. Every time we get a good look at Dante, it does look like he's villainous. Yeah. And that he that is... That first shot we got of his face might be my favorite <laughs> shot of the game. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh. oh, I love Nero's gun. I think it's so cool. Just the two boots straight yes. flat against the face. Boom. It's just right in the head of hilarious. Oh, oh, so good. That's another thing I love about these games is the cinematography is absolutely awesome. Um, I feel like it's got to be if so. Okay, in an action game when there's a lot of story, and it's it, things are over the top, I feel like there's got to be good cinematography to make it work. Yeah. <laughs> now, here's the fun part about this. Usually, whenever there are long cutscenes, what the hell? I don't remember this. Scissoring. <laughs> they are. They Thousars. are straight up scissoring Thousars. in the air. What the crow? Uh oh. Whoa, okay. Um, at any point in these cutscenes, because one of the biggest complaints about modern day video games, whenever it has a long, a, bit, a good story, well, I won't say good story, a story 
The cut opening cutscenes are too long. Do you feel at all bored watching this? I don't. I I don't feel bored. Now, does that make it good design? Um, not necessarily. Mm-hmm. But I think the expectation with playing Devil May Cry is that there are long cutscenes. Right. So I I'm not. I think it's good design because we're given this expectation. We're even given this expectation from that intro video that we first watched. Right. We understand that there's going to be a lot of cinematics with a lot of you know cool action sequences. Right. Um. So. I feel as though we weren't lied to. We know exactly what we're getting into. And if you've played the other Devil May Cry games, you know that there's probably going to be that kind of stuff. Um, oh, there's So a- it's it's consistent, you know, which is good. Damn it. That's something I just noticed. Huh. By picking the new costume, it skipped uh, a reveal. Um, so. Oh, really? Yes. Look That's- at his arm. Oh. All right. So I. So his ah, arm it. wasn't so it broken. It, it was just through. crazy. All right. So the thing with Nero, you saw when uh, when Dante right before Dante first showed up, his arm glowed, right? <laughs> ah, I don't know how I got here. Why am I spinning? Ah! <laughs> These are the skill point items that we know and love. So his arm glowed, right? Well, when Dante went to stab at uh, Nero, finally finding an opening, Nero blocked with the casted arm. There was a flash of light, and there was this crazy-looking arm in its place. Uh, Possibly revealing something about Nero. A, the sword that Dante uses is from his father. From the Dark Knight himself. Mm -hmm. Which is supposed to be an artifact of, of demonic origin, whatever. Right. Um... Now, for most situations... Oh, God, I'm dying here. I can't talk and play at the same time. Um, <laughs> for most situations, whenever he hits a demon with uh, the sword, they get damaged and they die. For him to rea- his arm to react in such a way to create this crazy-looking, like, uh, what are they called? The Devil Bringer. Um, that, that brings up an interesting point. What, what hurt him? What gave him the cast on his arm, and why is it reacting to near to Dante's sword? Why all of a sudden does he have this crazy ability? And it was all because of a weapon imbued on his arm, or is he just wearing it? I don't know. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, what I understood was that uh, he got hurt by something, and it, whatever wound he got reacted to the sword to Dante's sword. And it gave him this ability. So I don't know if he's supposed to be a normal human. I don't know if he's... So we don't you know. actually know too much about him. Right, because oh. we, we haven't even gotten that far in to figure out what's going on. Okay, that's pretty fair. Ah, he's baiting me. You're pretty one for one right now. Yeah. What's also frustrating is I don't have access to any special moves or anything, so I'm just stuck with the base, basic attack combo. So talk, talk a bit about how the combat works in this game while you're still beating him down. So, what's fun is that the special moves will give you access to sometimes uh, different special moves while you're in the air. Stuff to close in on your opponent. Um, But special moves that you don't have yet. Right, because you have to spend the the orbs to do so before each mission. So, okay, but talking strictly what you have right now, you have... Basically, what I have like a heavy attack, quick attack, and then guns? Nope. All you have are uh, gun attack, or ranged attack... Uh, and then sword attack, and then devil bringer attack, which is that crazy punch thing. And do they all just combo in their own ways? They can. Um, the thing with the ranged attack is that it doesn't really combo into like a close combat combo thing, whatever. Um, Dang. It basically it just get, does Jesus. damage from afar. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it was just unnecessary, but I mean, <laughs> oh, you know. Oh, oh, oh. I guess not unnecessary when you're dealing with Dante. Not really. This is awesome. Ready? Boom. Shit. Um, the combos for sword attack are really kind of fun because I think from the get-go you have two combos to go with. Oh, he's... Huh. He seems to be... Uh, he seems to be okay. All right, vamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yep. Just, you know, whatever. Just a little frisky dingo for you. Mm. 
nice uh that's one thing that always sort of bugged me about yeah. games back in the day. And Bloodborne might be the only game to really do something. What, with the it. blood effect? Well, there's the blood effect, but also he got stabbed through the chest. Why is his clothing totally fine? Oh, you know? yeah. Well, that's that's kind of what I was talking about. I was like, nice uh, 3D art you got there. Yeah, 2008, all right. Is it, well, is this the same, like, graphics and the same cutscenes from the 2008 yes. game? Oh, yes. okay. So it's, it's basically the same story, same design. It's just uh, different mechanics, more content, and, yeah. and some refinement. So something, a couple things got revealed in that cutscene right there. A, the dead bodies of the people that Dante were murder, was murdering were clearly not human. Uh. Clearly they were demon in origin. A. B you look at what Nero just did, he hid his arm, showing that... He doesn't want them to see it. He doesn't want them to see it because the cult is based around hunting demons and continuing Uh, Sparta's, you know, uh, legacy. What the hell? Oh, cool. Um, Was there anything else? Also, basically, it revealed that uh, Dante is the hero we... uh, Ideally, the hero we know and love, but there's still something else going on. We don't quite know why these people are demons. We don't know what Dante's role is in this game. We also don't know what's going on with the other people in the in the story so far. It just means that chaos has befallen the cult. And time will tell how it is resolved. But yeah, uh, the fight with Dante really sort of showcases the basic controls of the game. He's not overly difficult. It's, um, it's effectively tutorial. Yeah, it's effectively a tutorial, but it, it's, it gives you the basic controls and sort of throws you to the wolves. So you're like, okay, go fight Dante now. Have fun. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's fun tutorial, sort yeah. of. Um, but anyway, we'll talk more on this in the next episode. Yeah. We went over time just because there are a lot of cutscenes, and it's nice to see a little bit of gameplay in a Let's Play video. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, so we will see you in the archives. Boom.